All right, we're here to talk about saunas and cancer. Let's get into it. All right, to start with, uh, just a reminder again, I am not a doctor. And nothing that we talk about here should be taken as direct medical advice for your situation. You should always talk with your doctor uh, about making any changes to your treatment plan. We are just sharing what we learned and what we found to be helpful information to help inform our decisions. With that in mind, let's get into saunas and cancer. This is the second video in a series that we're doing on heat and cancer. The first video, which is linked below, uh, is all about the science of how heat affects cancer. It's really the foundation so that now as we talk about the most popular treatment options, uh, you have an idea of what we're going for from a science perspective and we're evaluating whether these different treatment options uh, hit those markers. All right, so we're diving into saunas. Uh, sneak peek, this is our sauna. It's Rachel in it. We got this pretty early on. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about it later. Um, but felt like the right picture to have. Okay, before we get into uh, specific types of saunas, because there are a number of different types, we're going to talk about three. Um, I kind of want to talk about the general benefits of saunas that really apply to all types of heat saunas on the market. So let's talk through those and then we'll get into what makes the different types unique. First off, they stimulate metabolism. So they're raising your heart rate, they're raising your temperature, that's thinning your blood. Um, your blood is flowing more freely through your limbs, through your, through your body, and this is stimulating your metabolism. So the second is it's increasing your immune function. This one's really cool because the fight against cancer uh, is in large part an operation of your immune system. And so we wanna always be doing things to stimulate, enhance, and reinforce our immune system um, to assist in this uh, fight that we're undertaking. And so uh, one study that was, that was super unique showed that there was a 30% increase in white blood cells responsible for fighting infections when someone was daily in the sauna for 30 minutes. So just engaging in this heat therapy has a fairly dramatic increase in immune function and decrease in general infections like colds and things. So really beneficial to the immune system. Um, so the next one is similar to, to the metabolism point, but really it just increases the function of your healthy organs. So again, improving your blood flow is helping get blood to those organs. It's helping flush them out and um, which is again, really beneficial. This one was interesting. So regular sauna usage has been tied to improved sleep. So deeper sleep and longer sleep. And so this was related to doing saunas soon before beds, so like in the evening, had this effect of, of improving someone's sleep. So the final general benefit here is detoxification. I, I put a caveat here because I feel like that word is overused. In, in the cancer realm and probably just in life, that idea of like detoxing, kind of everything detoxes and everything is toxic. And so I, I wanted to separate this point from that general statement because the, the detox genre is a pretty big topic. But in this case, uh, specifically related to this profuse sweating that saunas uh, bring about, there have been specific studies that tested a number of people's sweat after they got out of the sauna and what they found were toxic traces of metals like nickel, cadmium, and lead in that sweat. And so what they were able to determine from that is that that process of sweating, you know, your skin is your largest organ, that process of sweating is your body getting rid of these toxins that would otherwise be affecting things like organ fun function and your immune system. So really healthy process of getting heavy metals and other toxins out of your system in a fairly easy and simple way because you're just sitting in a sauna for 30 minutes. All right, so now that we've talked about the general benefits of saunas, I wanna look at the three types, primary types of saunas, starting with wet saunas. So a wet sauna or a steam sauna, um, 
uh, it really focuses on inducing sweating. And that, that does, in some ways, makes you feel like you're sweating more than you actually are because there's so much steam in the air, you're getting actual condensation on your body. Uh, but it does definitely stimulate your skin and raise that temperature to the point where you are sweating. It's really good at loosening muscles and, and relieving stress. Uh, the primary heating method is to use that hot steam to heat your body from the outside in. So we'll talk about the other heating methods, but this one really is, is focused on got uh, usually a, a hot stone that you're pouring water over that's producing the steam and that's what's heating the room. Wet saunas are great for many reasons, um, but maybe not the best option out there, specifically if you have cancer and are looking for the most benefit. Let's talk about the next type of sauna, the kind of opposite sauna, the dry sauna. So this one's super simple. It's essentially using a heat source, sometimes like a propane burner, sometimes an electric heater or radiator. And really the goal is just to raise the air temperature of the room. That's really what it's doing. So it's the air itself that is heating you. Dry saunas are a little bit easier to tolerate higher heats, which is it, maybe it's benefit that, that outweighs the, the wet sauna, just because you can hit higher heats and tolerate that for longer. It just has all the benefits we talked about kind of maxed out. Again, not the best option available. If you've got a dry sauna available to you, jump in, it's great, it has lots of benefits, but there's an option that is better. So let's talk about that option. This is the third type of sauna. This is the infrared sauna. So infrared saunas often look very similar to dry saunas or even wet saunas. They're, they're often made of cedar. Um, you don't really see a visual difference. But what infrared saunas are doing is they are using a type of heat wave, infrared heat, um, that essentially those waves, those energy waves, cut through the air. So they don't actually heat the air. They, they go straight through the air, and what they do is they heat the water molecules in and under your skin. So it's a direct heating function that's happening um, to you from these panels in the wall. Now, the room also gets pretty warm, and, and that's essentially, you know, the air does warm up, but that's because the box itself has moisture in it and it is heating and you're heating and so the air is heating around you. You can often be at lower temperatures, uh, at lower air temperatures because you're getting that same heat benefit because of that direct heat that's happening to your body. Infrared heat, uh, people differ on this a little bit, but it appears that it heats up to two inches beneath the surface. So it's really focused on heating your body. And again, it's not air heat. So, so separate from a wet sauna, which is using steam, or a dry sauna, which is using the air temperature, um, this is something that is irregardless of air temperature. And so you can get to higher heats or the same heats while actually being at a lower air temperature, which is more comfortable, easier to tolerate for longer periods of time. You're also getting deeper than just heating from the outside in because it starts heating at that two inch mark. So that's infrared saunas. Okay, so the last aspect I wanna talk about with infrared saunas has to do with its specific potential benefit for cancer. I've got a slide in a second that'll dive into it more, but remember we talked about the heat thresholds for cancer cell death. It was that 109 degrees Fahrenheit and 109.4 was that low end threshold that they had studied. Here's a quote from a doctor at The Truth About Cancer. Dr. Sanhe had this to say about infrared saunas. By exposing your body to that heat, you're selectively killing or eradicating less viable cells, meaning cancer cells. Remember, cancer cells are, are less healthy without hurting your normal cells. And so an infrared sauna is useful because it can help you sweat, excrete toxins, and in theory, eliminate cancer cells which can't survive the heat. So that's what really distinguishes infrared saunas from the other two. The other two, you get the sweat toxin benefit, but this adds the potential of 
killing cancer cells beneath the surface as well. I do want to be realistic about that though. In uses specific to cancer, it's more complicated than it appears. So because the, the heating only happens up to two inches deep, uh, that means like for, for Rachel's case, the cancer that she has had historically has been in her liver. And so two inches deep would not have been sufficient to actually heat the actual part of her liver that had the, the cancer. So in her case, and, and maybe in many people's case, you may not get that direct benefit. Now, um, if there are circulating cancer cells in your body or cancers more on the surface, this could be a really viable option to specifically target cancer. But the general benefit from a specifically cancer standpoint may be limited. Um, the, the other thing to keep in mind that we talked about last time is your body is made to regulate your core temperature. And so overall, whole body fever spikes is pretty limited. Remember, the benefit comes when you get towards that 109.4. That's a pretty severe fever point to get to. Um, that can often be dangerous if not done carefully and in a, in a clinical environment. We just want to keep that in mind that the benefits that we're going for from a sauna perspective may not be specifically targeting our cancer, but they are getting all of those benefits to our immune system, our metabolism, to excreting toxins. That is all super beneficial and super important. Improving sleep, all these things that make saunas, and particularly infrared saunas, a valuable part of our arsenal against cancer. So with that in mind, let's talk about infrared sauna options. So I wanna actually make some recommendations to you, starting with the option you've probably seen the most, which is the kind of traditional, put it together in your home, made of cedar, infrared sauna. This is actually a picture of the same sauna we have. It's by Sunlighten. It's the, the Impulse, the single person unit. And it's a great option. For some reason, it has a DVD player and, and other things. We don't feel like we need any of that, but it really well made. And, and a great option. They're expensive though. We actually found ours used, but knew they could be three to $5,000 for, for a single unit. And I, I would recommend being careful about if you're gonna purchase a sauna like this, about where you're getting that sauna from. And here's why. These types of saunas, these home wood sauna units, there was a boom in the last 20 years that caused a lot of consumer versions to be made that weren't taking a, uh, a medical approach in mind when, when developing them. And so many times, particularly as you get down the, the price category, those saunas are made using glue and stains. The wood, wood glue, you know, the assembly of it and stains and finishes to make the wood look nicer. You know, often big box stores, if they're selling, that's that's really what it's coming from somewhere, you know, maybe China, and that's how they're constructed. The thing to keep in mind is that glues and stains, a sauna is getting to 130 degrees, give or take. When you heat, you sit in a box filled with glues and stains, those start off gassing. And now you're you're breathing in and consuming that, those fumes and those those toxins. It's really counteracting a lot of the, the work that you're doing to become more healthy. Um, so you really wanna be careful with what type you get. What you wanna get is a sauna that is assembled without glue and without stains. And so that's where Sunlighten, I'm, I'm looking at it, it's right over here. The sauna that we have, um, it's from a, a company in Canada. They do really great work and uh, they've been doing it for a very long time and they assemble without wood glues and without any stains or finishes. And so that's really what you're looking for. The next thing, we didn't talk about this just because it didn't feel necessary for this, for this discussion, but infrared saunas, you'll see near infrared, far infrared, or combined infrared. The only things to keep in mind there are far infrared is the heat-based infrared component of a sauna. So it's using the heat infrared waves to heat you. 
near infrared is actually like a visible light version of of infrared um, and we're not going to get into that may have some benefits it's something we haven't looked deeply into but what you're really wanting to buy if if you, what your goal is is to get the benefits of infrared heat is the far infrared sauna many times they're combined ours is it has some lights that you can turn on that they hit that near infrared as well but what you're going for from a heat perspective is the far infrared version of a sauna all right so that's that's the expensive option maybe the option you've seen most i want to talk about a much more approachable version that gets you really the same benefits so it might look kind of silly at first but sauna option number two is an infrared sauna there's a number of these out there but they are portable you, this is you know obviously images of them set up but they they basically break down into a little bag you have a seat in there you know you, you set a seat in you get in you zip yourself in and you can have all the same benefits of an infrared sauna that's in the three to five grand category for about 300 maybe 350 dollars for a good quality version i have actually heard people talk about how they prefer this version because you do actually keep your head out and so they feel like they can stay in longer because their head isn't in that heat which is maybe where people struggle the most with the uncomfortable nature of the heat and so they find that this version actually allows them to relax and stay in the sauna longer i'm going to put a link to brand of these uh, down in the description below again really approachable price and gets you a lot of the same benefits so if you're waiting because you can't afford the three to five grand i would definitely recommend looking at these as a viable option link below it is an affiliate link so we get a little kickback from amazon but you you pay the same price and purchase through that link or, or on your own really we just want to make sure you know that this is an option for you all right and with that just want to throw out a few final considerations in the in the sauna realm and topic plan to be in for at least 30 minutes you really want to commit to the heating process infrared saunas can take a little while to get to heat but it's still beneficial for you to be in there whether you're you're reading a book listening to a podcast try to just really commit to being there you may get to a point this is in my experience as i've used our sauna you get to a point where you're uncomfortably warm. If you kind of just commit through that, you get to a, okay, this is a sustainable state. I feel like I'm, I'm sweating, I'm breathing deeply, I'm feeling the benefits of this, um, but you got to push through that. And for us, that's been in that like 30 minute plus realm. Try to get in at least three times a week. The consistency is really what seems to build up the benefits that we've talked about. It's not a one-time thing. It's a, I'm consistently doing this. If you couple it with exercise, you'll see some of the most benefit from a from a studied benefit standpoint, particularly around the immune system. Um, that study that talked about the 30% increase was actually for people who were regularly exercising as well. And so coupling, you know, planning maybe an hour where you're exercising and then getting in the sauna it would be a great kind of combination there. Remember to breathe deeply. If you know any breathing exercises, maybe we'll do an, a video on a few different breathing exercises. You're gonna be in the heat. There can be a stress component to that, but breathing deeply through the nose, out the mouth, and working on being calm is gonna just double down on the stress relieving benefits of being in there. So you wanna get the best kind of bang for your time commitment. The last recommendation that I'll have is to take a cup of ice water with you. The ice isn't all that important, but if you don't want to be drinking warm water 20 minutes in, you have some ice in there, it can keep it from, from getting too warm just from the heat itself. It's just super helpful to sustain you being in there and not feeling dehydrated, not feeling parched, but just going, I'm here to enjoy this process of being in the sauna. Um, that can be really beneficial as well. All right, and that is all I've got for you on the topic of saunas. Uh, let, let me know in the comments below if this was helpful. If you have other questions about saunas, there's a lot that we could have unpacked and really just try to get to the, if you had 10 minutes to learn about saunas because you're, you're in a cancer world that is overwhelming, 
we just need the information fast. That's really what we tried to do here. Um, so let us know uh, if there's other topics that you'd like us to hit on. Otherwise, be blessed, be safe, and we'll see you next week.